We've got the two teams ready to go. So let's go ahead and see our first player here that we get to feature. And it's going to be Matt Maynard looking absolutely wonderful there. I mean, look at that face on him. <laughs> that beautiful hair. I'm very envious. <laughs> <laughs> looking into the sunshine. <laughs> running a team of Rillaboom, King Gambit, which is not a Pokemon we've seen as commonly for Regulation E. There's Fluttermane, Heatran, Ogapon, and a Salamence that's not so much, not used as much, and you know, with a very strange moveset of Draco Meteor Air slash Tailwind and Roost. And I think Draco Meteor Air slash and Tailwind tend to be a bit more common on Salamence, but Roost is definitely not something that's used that commonly, but a rocky helmet and roost, and with the grassy terrain on Rillaboom, when Elmas is used as a roost, he can actually heal up his health because it lands. So this, I hope we get to see this mechanic in our game because this would be really, really cool. Right, and Salamence is, and especially this team in particular, has been picking up a little bit more popularity in the meta game right now. In fact, at, at Stuttgart at the weekend, this sort of composition, or at least King Gambit, was absolutely everywhere in in the event. I feel like. For the last European regional in regulation set E, a lot of trainers moved to this sort of team because it really has a good matchup against those Tornadoes Urshifu teams that have been running around so much. Of course, we do have to shout out Matt's accomplishments here on the left hand side. Two top 16s that I mentioned in the 2022 season, getting day two in the European International Championships, and of course, getting top 32 in Stuttgart this weekend. Yes, yeah, so some really great accomplishments, you know, top 32 I forgot just this weekend. So he should have, a, he's probably been practicing with the team quite a lot. I'm, I think that's the team that he has been using for Stuttgart. So, you know, he's got a lot of practice with this team, really familiar with it. And also just been playing very consistently at a high level at all the regionals. And, and now let's have a look at Marco's team, which will be, I think, when we, we did have our previous spoiler. So Marco is running the runner-up LAIC team. So essentially his opponent's team for, for this game. So this is really, really cool to see. Yeah, Marco looking at the team that he battles against in the Latin American Internationals and thinking, hey, that's actually pretty cool. So why don't I get a chance to give it a go myself? I mean, looking first, let's, let's look first at the accomplishments before we get into this team, because there's a few of them to Marco's name, uh, Yonkaping Regional Champion in 2019, winning the Oceania International Championships, top 16 at Worlds in 2023, and just coming off the back, as we said, of the Latin Internationals win. So, you know, if there was a player that was ever on form at the moment, it would be Marco. And I think, you know, this really does show that Matt's got a little bit of work to do in this game to be able to beat Marco, at least as far as paper goes, but we'll have to see it's anyone's game. Yes, we've seen time and time again, you know, just because one player has more, you know, the higher accomplishments than another player doesn't mean that we can predict the results of a match because a lot of the times, sometimes it's a team composition, sometimes it's the way the players are playing with each team can make the games really, really different. And I think Marco, from when I was watching LAIC stream, he had faced his opponent, I think, twice already, was either, but, and I think it, he was saying it went quite evenly both ways. So, you know, he probably realizes that this is still a really, really powerful team, and we did just see it in that previous game. So, hyper offense, you know, a, a really cool archetype. Reggie like he, you know, not something that people thought was that good until LAIC proven wrong. Yeah, and we'll have to get into this game one right now. If you've been watching on the broadcast, you've already seen a little bit of a sneak peek as we get into turn one, game one. We're seeing this game from Marco's perspective. It's that Chi Yu Fluttermane against King Gambit and Ogapon. Yes, Chi Yu Fluttermane, a really common lead just because the two of them just deal out so much damage right from the get go. Matt leading with the Ogapon and the King Gambit, King Gambit, maybe not having as great of a time against the Chiyo, but the Ogre Pond has a fantastic time. It's a what so it resists or at least takes neutral damage from both attacks. And if it does choose to go for the Terror, it will get a plus one special defense boost. So that is going to be very, very helpful against a Chiyu that's got Beads of Ruin active on the field. Especially since that Chiyu is carrying the Terror Fire, it's got no way to, you know, reduce the damage away from a Ivy Cudgel from this 
uh, Wellspring Ogre Pond. So it really does depend on how these players want to deal with this particular turn. The one thing I'm thinking of is how powerful a Terror Fire Overheat could even be into that King Gambit and maybe a combination of the Moonblast and the Beams of Ruin could do a little bit of work but Matt choosing to get that special defense boost that you mentioned there Zoe and get that Ogre Pond all set up here as Chi Yu goes on the defensive. Yes, Chi Yu, why is he just trying to put it? Oh, that Sucker Punch did so much damage to that Flutterme and uh, Flutterme is going to use Moonblast on that uh, Ogre Pond which does quite a reasonable amount of damage and I think you know had that Ogre Pond not gotten up for the Terra, it probably would not have actually would have been left with a lot less health because mm. it was at plus one special defense and now this flutter main is going to be filled by another sucker punch if it chooses to attack and if the king gambit chooses to go for the sucker punch into it right is it like brave play here from the king gambit because even though the ogre pond is threatening the ko on that chi yu the chi is definitely threatening the ko on that uh, that uh, king gambit on that side of the field if the chi yu was to be able to go for a heat wave or an overheat boosted up by that life orb chi yu this turn though not going to be wanting to take the water type ivy cudgel from the ogre pond that matt's got nicely set up so bringing in that uh, that wellspring ogre pond to take a Ivy Cudgel as well as protecting that Fluttermane. Yes, it looks like that was a very good switch from Marco, just absorbing that Ivy Cudgel. The Ogre Pond on Marco's side has not gone for the Terra, so it will be immune to any water type attacks. And now this Fluttermane is still, it has gone for the Protect last turn to dodge that Sucker Punch, but if it chooses to attack and if Matt chooses to go for the Sucker Punch one more time, I think, does Marco's Ogre Pond have follow me or is it the typical source? But I think it's I just think the, it's the sword stance. It's the sword stance on yep. Marco's team rather than the follow me. So no opportunity to kind of redirect that sucker punch from the King Gambit. But Ogrepon this time going on the defensive on Matt's side. In fact, switching yeah. into the Rillaboom and taking that Horn Leech very, very well. Moonglass was going into that King Gambit. So King Gambit left with just over 50% health. But the King Gambit, Matt, gets a Swords Dance set up in this situation. This King Gambit, if it wasn't threatening before, it really is now. Oh yeah, King Gambit is one of those really, really scary Pokemon. And once it gets plus two in attack, it is real. It can the sucker punches are, will really, really hurt. And you know that Fluttermane is in danger of being KO'd from the sucker punch. But Marco calling very wisely last turn to you know, actually attack, but Ogre Pond going for that spike issue, just trying to keep himself safe, and King Gambit does not go for the Sucker Punch this turn. Real Boom, however, is going to go for the High Force Power and knock out that Flutter main. Yeah, it's a big knockout there. I think you've got to be wary of the Indeedy switch in in this situation. I mean, whether or not Marco has it in the back, it's one of those Pokemon that if Marco uses really effectively, he can swap in on maybe a Sucker Punch and be able to get a lot of big damage in there. I think that's what Matt's trying to do in this situation. Grassy Glide is a move that stops becoming a priority move once the terrain changes. So it's not so much of an impact on the Rillaboom. You can kind of try and high roll slightly and maybe go for the uh, Grassy Glide in Grassy Terrain. If it's a priority move, great. And if it's not, then no harm done. You still get the damage down. Yes, and this Chi Yu you have coming in is going to threaten super effective damage on both the Rillaboom and the King Gambit with that heat wave. You know, Ogre Pond also sitting in quite, quite nice health. It's not really, well, if the Indeed switches in, which we do see Marco maybe hovering over it, considering because now that grassy terrain is on the field, there's Matt can't really switch it in to override the Indeed. He has to switch out yeah. that Rillaboom to reset it. So, you know, we'll see. I think the if the Indeed coming in this turn will protect one of its teammates from that sucker punch. And it's the Chi Yu going to be switching out, going on the defensive here. The Indeed that we've been talking about all game coming in, getting that Psychic Surge set up on the field. Also going to activate that Psychic Seed, so Indeed he's feeling a little bit more defensively capable, but three of the Pokemon we've seen from Matt are carrying more physical attacks. An Ivy Cudgel going down into the King Gambit, and Matt not falling whatsoever for the Psychic Terrain play there, but also not getting an attack off either. 
Woodhammer going into that Ogre Pond, doing a good amount of damage, but without that grassy terrain, it's not even close to being able to pick up the KO. No, that was not. And although the Ogre Pond is in danger of getting it knocked out with one more Woodhammer, if the indeed does not go for a Follow Me, of course, Flutter Main, I think that is. Is Matt's Flutter Main a choice to set items? Oh, yes, it's, so it can just choose to go for it. Guys. I don't think Marco has gotten for a Terra yet. So if the Ogre Pond goes for Terrestrialization, I, I'm not sure. It might be able to survive on a sliver or it might get knocked out in its range. I think we saw Matt's Ogre Pond actually survive quite healthily from Marco's Flutter Main, but I, mm. I don't think that Flutter Main was carrying choice specs. So that was doing a little bit less damage, but did have also the Chi Yu on the field. So we'll see, okay, we see that Terra coming out from Marco's side, and it is going to be in that Ogre Pond to get that plus one, especially defense. It's a really sensible Terra here, combined with the Follow Me, at least the threat of Follow Me on the Ndidi, you definitely get the opportunity to stop Matt from just going for a Moonblast into the Ogre Pond. That definitely, with a choice effect, would be enough to pick up the KO, and Mark playing. Uh, Marco playing the safe turn here, getting that follow me off onto the field. Matt going for the doubling gleam, it is enough to pick up the KO here onto that Ogre Pond. So no damage coming out from Marco here. The Indeedy not attacking either. And a big wood hammer coming onto that Indeedy. Wow. Not going to pick up the KO, but my, my Lord Terry is in KO range from another dazzling gleam. Yeah, what a fantastic turn for Matt there, just knocking out that Ogre Pond, baiting out the Terra, and, but getting rid of it in one turn without the Ogre Pond managing to get anything done. And now this Indeedy is in danger of getting KO'd, and the Chi Yu, of course, you know, being a life orbs, it can probably survive and, you know, it will be firing back with a very, very powerful heat wave if it chooses to attack. But I think Matt's Ogre Pond in the back does, I, I think Ogre Pond just naturally outspeeds the Chi Yu, so once. You know, if the Indeedy goes down, then there's really nothing that can save the Chiyu from getting an Ivy Cudgel, and I think Marco does recognize that and is going to forfeit this game one. I think there's a, you know, it, it makes sense from what we, what you just mentioned there, Zoe. Like the Ogre Pond, if it does outspeed the Chiyu, uh, then it definitely would be able to pick up the knockout with a clean Ivy Cudgel, especially with that Terra Water boosted uh, Ivy Cudgel. It, there's no way that Chi Yu would be able to hang on. But I think Marco lost the opportunity there to get a little bit of information and actually confirm for both of these players whether or not that Ogre Pond on Matt's side of the field was going to be faster than a Chi Yu. And maybe you get the opportunity to build that into your game plan. When you're going into game two, if you again uh, on Marco's side, if you lead that Chi Yu Flutter, you want to know if you can just launch out a Heat Wave or an Overheat Turn 1 and get some big damage onto the field. Um, so maybe a little bit of an early cancellation of the battle, but maybe Marco knows something that we don't. Yes, and I also do wonder, in that game one, where Matt led with the Ogre Pond and King Gambit and just boldly attacked the King Gambit, yeah. I wonder if he just knew that because the Chiyu was a Terra Fire and it couldn't really Terra out of that weakness, maybe he knew that regardless of what happens, he could get rid of that Chiyu and the King Gambit would be free to attack, because we did see that um, Ogre Pond go for the Ivy Cudgel into the protecting Chiyu. So maybe that's something that Matt knew and maybe Marco kind of inferred from that turn one that maybe Matt's running a really fast Ogre Pond. It certainly could be and you know it's it's one of those situations I think Matt trying to break the focus sash on the Flutter main because that kind of makes a bit of a difference in this matchup where Flutter main we're used to seeing with a booster energy or choice specs or, or whatever, you know, you, you can get a one hit knockout on it, but being able to break the focus sash is I think quite an important aspect of this particular matchup. We'll have to see how that shakes up in game two. So without further ado, let's see how these trainers have adjusted. And here we are, game two starting. A, a very different lead from Matt with Heatran and Ogapon and Ogapon and Floodmane. So both trainers swapping out one of their Pokemon for a, another one, Heatran coming out, which is going to have a very good time against the Floodmane on Marco's side, but is not going to be enjoying taking any Ivy Cudgels from Marco's Ogapon. Not at all, and uh, I think this is uh, you know one of those difficult situations where. 
poor Marco, you've got to work out whether or not the Ogre Paul on that side of the field, which does carry Follow Me, is going to be able to redirect attacks away from it. And of course, whether or not that Heatran's going to just go for a Terra Grass and be able to you know, survive that attack, or go on the defensive completely and switch it on, switch it in on out of there. <laughs> it looks like Matt is not going to want to take any chances just yet, and he's gonna, gonna make a safe switch of that real boom coming in. But real boom is going to take a shadow ball for all of his troubles, and does a nice bit of damage onto it. And Ogopon just boldly going for the Ivy Cudgel right in front of another Ogopon that has water absorb and that Ivy Cudgel on that side taking that flutter mate all the way down to its focus sap. You can't argue with the uh, the guts of Marco there just going for that straight ivy cudgel but i think it makes a lot of sense in this situation ogre pond's not really threatened we saw in game one uh, that matt committed to terror quite early in that match and uh, went for the ogre pond so you kind of want to think that matt's going to do a similar thing this this game if you're marco and you want to take advantage of that as much as possible if you don't deal with a pokemon like heatran effectively then it can really cause problems but rillaboom's going to cause problems of its own this turn for marco knocking out that Fluttermane with a grassy glide two opportunities here that marco's had to get that indeedy in and be able to block that priority move and get that Fluttermane to attack again but matt's been able to take advantage of it both times Hall Leech to finish off the turn, going into that Ogre Pond and doing a good chunk of damage. Yes, that was quite a bit of damage onto Marco's Ogre Pond, which now has set up a Sword Stance, so it is at plus two, of course. You know, once I think this Ogre Pond does carry off, I think they both carry Hall Leech with the grassy terrain on the field, but which is now going to be overwritten by the um, psychic terrain so no more priority grassy guys off this Rillaboom and indeed also carrying the follow me and that not having any uh, spread moves means that indeed he can just click follow me and redirect any moves away and allow this Ogre Pond on Marco's side as a plus two attack to you know, deal a lot of damage with a Horn Leech or Ivy Conjure. It's going to be the spiky shield though on Matt's Ogre Pond protecting itself from any damage coming out from Marco's, but it's going to be the Ivy Cudgel going into the Rillaboom. Ooh. It's enough to pick up the knockout from 50% of Rillaboom's health, and that's a really, really powerful attack coming out there. Um, and, and a strong situation for Marco to be in here when you've got the Ogre Pond on here on Marco's side. We've got an Ogre Pond on both sides. There's too many, too many <laughs> Ogre Pond on the field, though. Uh, on, on Marco's side, um, because it still has that Terra option available, it's going to be maybe out of KO range for this Fluttermane coming in on that side. Yes, indeed. And I wonder, you know, but a lot of times Marco has just gone straight for the Ivy Cudgel in front of Matt's Ogre Pond. Uh, those are very, very bold moves. And I wonder if it's something that Matt might catch on to and maybe go for a follow me on his own Ogre Pond, maybe to try redirect. But of course, this Ogre Pond is at plus two, so the Horn Leeches will be hurting a lot if it manages to still land into Ogre Pond. And Matt's Ogre Pond did go for the Spiky Shield the last turn, so it won't be able to protect this turn. At least, you know, there'll be a very high chance of it failing if it goes for that. And we mm. see, indeed, I think going for protect. Well, we'll have to see this okay. turn. I'm afraid my Italian isn't so good, Zoe, <laughs> that I can read what's on Marco's side of the screen. But we're going to see a Terra Fairy from Matt yet again this turn. It's going to be going for probably that Dazzling Gleam, I would imagine. Uh, so sort of same situation as in Game 1. And I wouldn't expect Matt to be playing any differently this turn. A Terra coming out from Ogapon on Marco's side. It's going to be that Terra Water coming out from that Ogre Pond, boosting up its special defense. This is coming down to the wire here. Follow me on Matt's Ogre Pond, redirecting any attacks away from that Fluttermane. Going to be able to give it an opportunity to maybe go for a couple of Dazzling Gleams, but we're going to have to see if it gets that opportunity. Oh, dazzling Gleam, Terra oh. Fairy, 13 hit points that it survives <laughs> on, and a Horn Leech onto Ooh. Matt's Ogre Pond. 
that's going to recover almost all of that HP back. It ends the turn with more HP than it started with. Oh, it did indeed. That Horn Leech just, you know, doing just a really good combination with the Swords Dance, just making sure that, you know, you take a hit, get the Swords Dance up, and then heal all the way back up with an Ndidi on the field to support. And, you know, Ndidi didn't really draw away any attacks that last time. I think, you know, Matt may, maybe trying to catch an IV Cudgel, but not quite getting there. So, had the Ogre Pond on Matt's side actually managed to maybe get off a Horn Leech, it might have put that Ogre Pond on Marco's side into range for Dazzling Beam, but you know, we did see in that last turn the Ogre Pond in less than 50% did survive, so it's so likely it will be able to survive this turn, but it goes with a Spiky Shield. Spiky Shield. Oh, on both oh, Ogre both. Ponds okay. here. Uh, all, both of them deciding that they don't want to take any more damage. Uh, Fluttermane going for the Dazzling Gleam here, and with that Psychic Seed on Indeedy, unless it gets a critical hit, no does survive on quite a bit of damage uh, quite a bit of health left psychic though into ogre pond on that side and it's looking like marco trying to take away that redirection so that indeed the ogre pond will be able to sort of clean out this game but at this point you have the opportunity of your map to be able to just redirect in Dazzling Gleam. There's no more recovery with the Horn Leech because you've already taken all the Horn Leech damage in the last turn. That's exactly what we're seeing here. Follow me coming out from the Ogre Pond and it's going to be a Dazzling Gleam. And that is easily going to be enough to pick up the Indeedy. But Ooh. Ogre Pond again hanging on with just a few hit points. <laughs> yes, Ogre Pond is going to get its attack redirected to that Horn Leech as you mentioned earlier. Onto Matt's Ogre Pond, which is so low on health that it's really not recovering much at all, and it does put the Ogre Pond on Marco's side in range of another Dazzling Gleam. Matt's Ogre Pond, of course, heroically going down, just buying enough turns for its teammate to be able to, you know, get one more Dazzling Gleam off. And now, Heatran up against the Chi Yu is going to really, it's going to be completely immune to any of its um, fire type attacks. So. Chi Yu's only choice to hurt this Tran is going to be Snarl and Ogre Pond just going for another spiky shield just to keep itself safe for a more turn boss. Fluttermane is of course locked into that Dazzling Gleam. Dazzling Gleam going into the Protect or the Spiky Shield should I say onto the Ogre Pond and it's not enough to pick up a KO, no critical hits here. Chi Yu going for that overheat but it's a miss onto oh, the no. Fluttermane and an Earth Power follow up. From this Heatran, Matt absolutely bailed out in this game by that overheat miss because if that connected into the Fluttermane, then that would have oh. easily have been enough to pick up the one hit knockout, especially boosted up by that Life Orb and the boost in damage from that Beads of Ruin. And Heatran, without the opportunity to Terra, would definitely be going down to this 2 plus Ivy Cudgel as it stands. Fluttermane is going to be able to finish the job off here knock out that Ogre Pond with a final Dazzling Gleam and Matt taking this set two games to zero.